Hey guys, welcome back. It's Shelby, and today we are using those sparkly gems that I've recently become obsessed with. They're right here in the bag. And we are going to be bedazzling some lovely shoes. So I ordered in just a cheap pair of white pumps. I will uh, link some below. Uh, there's nothing super special about them. I kept the heel a little bit low. Maybe I should have gone crazy, but like, I don't know, I didn't. I'm not going to bedazzle the whole thing. I'm thinking like the heel and then like just this triangle area on the toe, but yeah. So you need shoes, you need gems, and you need glue, and that's all you need for this project. I'll link some below and uh, let's get going. So go ahead and start with a pair of shoes. They don't need to be white pumps. They don't even need to be pumps. Just whatever you want to bedazzle, you do you. Go ahead and get those shoes, and then we are going to sort through our gems. So basically, I want enough gems for each shoe to do the heel and the toe, but then I want each shoe to look like each other. I want them to be symmetrical. So I am sorting out all of my gems into two piles, one pile per shoe, basically. So get all of your gems sorted and then put the ones that you're not using for the shoe away. I just tucked mine in bags in the other shoe so that I wouldn't get confused and overuse my gems. Next up, go ahead and get your glue. I'm using E6000 for this. And to start with, of course, I am being very, very careful and just putting a small amount of glue on the gem and carefully affixing it to the back of my shoe. Also cleaning up any extra glue that squeezes out with a Q-tip. This is always the best way to start so you don't have extra glue everywhere. Is it the way I'm going to do the whole shoe? We all know it's not, but it is a great way to start the project off. So the first couple gems are just really trial and error. I don't actually have a mapped out design for how I want this to go. Basically, I know that I need to start with some larger gems as the focal point and then kind of surround them with different sizes and different shapes of gems. The different sizes and shapes are what give that really strong visual interest because they catch the light in different ways. If you use, you know, uniformly shaped gems, it's going to be beautiful, but it's not going to be quite as visually interesting as if you use different shapes so go ahead and mix it up for me personally i think i decided that i want to make a column down the heel of the shoe rather than like do the entire heel or like kind of a mountain or any other shape um, so i'm going to kind of keep all of my gems vertical and then try to square up the edges with some triangles and a couple of the smaller gems when those are to your satisfaction, I moved on down to the heel. And for this, that's when I started uh, losing my super superior gluing technique. And I'm starting to switch from putting them on each individual gem to just kind of covering the heel and then sticking the gems on. So I've one side of it done and you can see it's fabulous. Really the only thing I paid attention to is the lines of the shoe. So you see where the heel meets the shoe and then the edge of the heel that goes off into space. My gems are lined up against that. They've got kind of flat backs against the edges so that they're not sticking off over, you know, the heel edge underneath the shoes so that they still look good. And then also you'll notice the entire like back of the shoe proper. That's only got the column of gems going down it. I don't have any gems from the heel of the shoe going up onto the back of the shoe. I made that a real crisp line just with flat backed gems and smaller ones to make sure that it is a defined space. Just the heel is fully bedazzled. It goes up a column up the back of the shoe. That's the shape I'm going for. And you might notice that I am flipping the shoe back and forth over and over again. That's because I want to make these as symmetrical as possible. So I'm looking at what I did on the previous side to make sure that I glued the new gems in place on this brand new side. You'll also notice that I'm just grabbing the gems straight from the table and putting them on. That is because I've totally loaded up this heel with glue already so that I don't have to individually put them on. No, it's not the best practice, but like also it saves so much time. And don't these look fabulous? Seriously, so pretty. So now that the heel and back of the shoe are done just how I want them, I'm going to move on to the toe section. So first off, I need to figure out what I'm going to do on the toe, and I'm back to carefully putting a gem right center. And then I decided that was already too much work, so I'm just putting some glue on the front of the shoe, going in with some other shapes. So I started with oval, and now I'm going in with teardrop shapes just to kind of frame it up. At this point, I really don't know how many gems I want on the front. And this is super cute, but it looks a little bit too much like a butterfly for me. 
yeah, just a little bit butterfly-y. So I'm going to go in with some additional gems. Triangles are a great way to kind of box up the edges of a shape. If you use some of the more round gems, you just do the flat edge on the outside and it makes it a little bit more defined. So I'm going to go in with some triangles and reassess. And while that is a great shape, it's a little bit smaller than maybe I want. So I think I'm going to go in the rhombus slash trapezoid type shapes. They're like a little bit off, but I'm going to use those to create just a nice little bit band of five around the shape that I've already got going for me and that's just going to expand the sparkle on the toe area. I'm going to move the gems into place. They do move a little bit because E6000 isn't totally dry right away. It takes about 24 hours but uh, yeah this is shoe number one and it is so beautiful. So just to compare against shoe number two, you can see we've definitely made a change. And since I want these shoes to be totally symmetrical, I am putting the one that is finished off to the side in a position that I can easily reference the gem layout on it from. So it's just right next to me. I'm gonna start the next shoe with a bunch of glue just on the toe area. And I'm going to fill in that toe area with the gems in the exact same pattern that I have it on the first shoe that I did. It does go on so much more quickly when you're not trying to figure out the pattern on the fly, when all you have to do is put your glue on and attach the gems in a predetermined pattern. The one thing to watch out for is, I think I mentioned it earlier, E6000 does take a bit to dry and it's liquidy kind of. So the gems will slide around on you a little bit, but wherever they kind of sit when they are drying, that's what you're going to end up with. So just check them every couple minutes and make sure that your gems haven't slid out of place. If you only use like a very small amount of glue, it's less of an issue than if you have a lot of glue on there, like I kind of did. And then, you know, it's dripping and sliding down with the weight of the gems. So just watch those, move them into place. Once the glue's tacky, it's less of an issue. So so we are going to finish up the back of the second shoe. I've already got the column of gems on and I'm moving down the heel. I am moving in sections. This is mainly just to avoid a giant mess because the glue is not going to dry more quickly than I can put the gems on. But I'm working around the glue with my fingers on the heel of the shoe and I'm trying to keep my work area and my workstation and my hands as clean as possible and to avoid as much glue on top of the gems as possible because that's going to dull their shimmer. Some of them did get a little bit gummed up but for the most part they're fine. So basically here, the really important thing is making sure that I have symmetry. So I'm going to fill in the whole side area of the shoe. Again, putting the line down the back just allows me to work in sections. And then I am going to turn the other shoe out to reference the outside heel. It should be the same as the inside heel, but it's just easier for me to reference it. And you will notice that I move the other shoe up and down quite a bit. Sorry about that. That's really just for me to try to work around the camera angle and where my head is at to see the shoes and where my arms are at to try and not only be able to see what I'm doing, but also be able to capture it on camera on an angle that is a little bit better for you guys. I think once the side is done, I'm going to change the camera angle so it will be a little bit more friendly for me to be able to see what gems need to go where, but then also so you guys to be able to see what I am doing so I don't do this to you where the shoe's half out of the frame because I'm trying to see what I'm doing. But here we are, the very last section of the shoe. I already have my glue on there. You can see it's like super shiny, shinier than the other parts of the shoe. And I'm just loading up my gems, trying to make them exactly identical to the other shoe and also fit within the space. So yeah, we are going to be done here pretty soon and we are going to model them. And I'm so excited with the way these turned out. They are like literally probably the best thing I've done in a while. They're so, so cute, so beautiful. And we are all set, so here we go. We're going to model them. And the typical walking across the screen and walking back so you can see both sides of the shoes. I don't know what I'm doing here. Mainly, I'm just trying to show them off in different lights and different angles and let you see how fabulous and sparkly they are. But I think that these are absolutely beautiful. I'm so excited for them. And I hope you guys liked it. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye for now.